Uh, next approach is backache. Okay, what comes in your mind when you talk about the backache? Just, just give me quick, very quick answers. Yes, yes. Uh, you need to ask a very quick question. You need, you cannot stuck over there asking the question regarding the infection. We have talked about the infection of chest infection. You will be asking about any GI infection, any GI problem. You ask one question. Any problem with your poo or pee? This is one question. And this is covering two systems, okay? Because it is the quick section. You cannot stuck over there. Any shortness of breath, any cough, any fever. Because you ask fever, that will be ruling out many things. Many infections, okay? Then you will be asking about... Yes, fever is covering them, but you, you can ask two, three questions to, to giving it a systemic inquiry, like, look. You should ask. First question should be, do, does he have any fever? Do you have any fever? For example, does he have any fever? Then you will be asking about any problem with poo, any problem with pee, okay? Uh, any neck stiffness, any shyness with the light, any cough. So these three, four questions you can ask. You should ask, actually. Uh, okay, now uh, towards the backache approach, just give me your, uh, what comes in your mind when the person comes with a backache? What comes in your mind quickly? Mechanical, yeah, it should be, it should be on the top priority. This prolapse, good. One more, one more. Encolizing spondylitis, sciatica. Okay, degenerative. Actually, we are we are going to cover here this all back region. Uh, even uh, yes, mats. Exactly, mats. It could be due to any mats. It could be like due to multiple myeloma. It could be due to prostate cancer. So these are all scenarios we are going to discuss. And one thing pyelonephritis. This is, I, I want to say, because we are talking about the groin region and the back, we are going to cover it together. So, sufficient. Okay. So, these are the DDs. You you, you can, this is for you to read it. Not, uh, we are, I'm not, uh, yeah, reactive arthritis as well. Problem with, you need to ask reactive arthritis, it can be. So, these are the all DDs. You just give a read to it and there are the questions regarding that. We are going to jump directly towards, uh, achha, keep in mind, keep in mind, these are the red flags you will never forget to ask. In, in backache scenario, never forget to ask, do you have any constipation, do you need retention? Have you lost any bowel and bladder control? These questions should never be left, never be forget. Do you have any loss of sensation in your legs? Is there any weakness or sensory changes in your limbs? You can, you can forget to ask any of the DD questions, but you should never forget to ask these questions. Yeah. Okay. So these are the red flags. Um, you can say them the cordaquina. You can say that the cord, cord compression, whichever the symptoms should come in your mind. You should, these are the red flags of that. So never forget about that. Okay. Now it comes towards uh, the station, back, back pain with renal colic. You are FY in the emergency, 45 year old man presented with back pain. Look at this can be due to renal colic as well. Nurse given him one tablet for diclofenic. Take a focus history, discuss the management with the patient, patient information, what it is. As soon as do doctor comes in or say, you say, I'm in pain. He should start crying. Doc, I'm in pain. In, in this way, literally in this way. Doc, I'm having a lot of pain here. So, you need, after you entered, you just said, okay, hello, my name is Dr. Hamid. I'm one of the FY working the uh, emergency. Can, can I confirm your name? And say, oh, doc, I'm having to leave everything behind. Just focus on the pain. Just focus on him. Leave everything behind. Like anything, don't go to your approach first. Ask, okay. I'm sorry that you are in pain. Let me, uh, uh, can, can we talk or should I give you some painkiller? Or, or have you taken, first ask, have you taken anything for your pain? Because maybe 
before coming from home five minute ago he has taken the painkiller and you will be take, giving another painkiller you you should ask before giving the painkiller have you taken anything for your pain no are you comfortable in talking no doc please okay give me some painkiller okay say say the, uh, okay i'm going to give you the painkiller just say that and please thank doc he will be saying thank doc doc okay so your problem is resolved he will be talking to you because here they want to check because it's not this scenario sometime one or two scenario in your six situation will be the patient will be giving you some verbal and non verbal clues this is verbal clue doc i'm in talking i'm um, doc i'm in pain so whenever patient is saying i'm in pain you have to address that first maybe your addresser this is as well as addressing the pain can you talk why why if i ask you some question this is a way, very good way what if i ask you a few questions and then i will be knowing about what is the causing you the pain can you can you bear it i will be quick as much as i can this is the best thing to do because without knowing the nature what patient is coming okay what's the worst thing is you ignore the patient worst thing is patient say oh, dog i'm in pain and you will say okay Now, could you please tell me since how long the pain is? You you have ignored the patient completely. You have started like telling your stories. This is the worst thing. This this is the worst thing. So best thing is you ask the patient. You confirm the patient. I'm really sorry that you are having this pain. Let me ask a few more questions so that I can know where the the pain is coming from so that I can give you the best what is in best interest of you. Okay, so. can can you bear a little bit for me don't don't like be panic that my time is running out this this is giving you the marks only doing this will give you two to three marks trust me because the, the examiner will be happy examiner will be happy that but the examiner want to listen in the start of the scenario and you have told the examiner will be happy and then you will be missing a little bit the examiner will be saying okay it's okay no problem and you will not complete the station you in the management station uh, you will be saying a little bit things you cannot and you will pass the station however if you make such a blunder you know the patient then it is very hard because i have seen and we have discussed between us that the most stations fail are, are because you are not the patient side so be the patient side. be the patient side okay so after like this is the patient information you are in pain which started 4 hours ago you have been given diclofenac 20 45 minutes ago you should keep saying doc i am in pain continuous anti doctor reassure that the analgesia would take some time to work look at this you have asked the patient have you taken anything yes i have taken the injection of diclofenac sodium then you say okay let me don't say don't rush i am going to give you another painkiller say okay let me ask few more question and the pain killer and uh, you have already taken it takes some time to work yeah. and let me ask you question and if if still you will be in pain i am going to give you another painkiller no worry let, but let me have idea that what you are having is that okay can you bear it for me a little bit okay on the patient will say okay doc ask the question your pain is 10 by 10 and was 10 by 10 now it is 8 by 10 okay because when you are going to do the stupa krs and in the stupa care as the patient is going to tell you this okay where is the pain these are question we are going to ask and these are the concern and we are going to see okay now this is another scenario the other scenario is the same scenario we are going to discuss both of them in a one scenario you are you are in gp surgery and this is where you are this is where you are emergency and this is where you are in gp surgery made an appointment to see you yesterday yesterday he saw of the gp with the back pain he was told he could have the renal colic he was given diclofenac suppository the pain resolved he was advised to switch the gp he made an appointment he is not in the pain the other one is in the pain and in the emergency he is with the gp okay and so these are the two different scenario of the same nature only the problem is that the kind of both are the renal colic and but where you are and what the symptom patient is having this is important over here develop sudden back pain yesterday pain is coming in a waves would last about 4 5 minute now the pain is 
she's not having he's not having pain normally feed no other medication the other thing you are going to ask about okay the first thing here to do is stupa krs what is stupa krs i'm going to like abruptly because we are going to deal the whole of the today with the stupa krs i'm going to repeat it for you what is stupa krs as for sight where is the pain t for timing since how long you have been having that two question for t frequency as well is the first time you are having that or you has had that before as well o for onset how did the patient the pain start what were you doing the when the pain started okay these are the two question onset progression two question for uh, progression uh, since it started it has uh, uh, it is progressing decreasing or staying the same okay uh again is the association and the thing uh, 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 aggravating or relieving factor so a for aggravating or relieving factor is there anything aggravating it or relieving it a for kind what type of pain is that the cloaky one is that the dull one you should not ask the close ended question you should just ask what kind of pain it is can you describe the pain for me r for uh, r for uh, okay it is a radiation r for radiation where the pain is going and as for Uh, score the pain for me. Can you score your pain for me from one to ten? Okay. So these are the questions you need to ask in any pain question, any pain question. Okay. So again, we know we go from the dangerous to the most common, dangerous to the most common. <clears throat> so first thing should come in mind infection. Infection is like it can go to the sepsis. It's always dangerous. UTI, pyelonephritis, urinary problem, vomiting, shivering. You need to ask all these questions directly. UTI. and pyelonephritis you will be asking on any problem with pee any fever any chill any rigors you need to ask all these question kidney stone questions do you have any history of kidney stones acute cholecystitis question any any gall stone because the history of gall stone is any trauma exactly you need to ask the trauma question then you need to ask about the prostate cancer questions trauma uh, i think the trauma should be a little bit above because it should be before the kidney stone or after the kidney stone trauma questions any any have you injured yourself recently any trauma recently okay you need any question you can ask in your own way similarly prostate cancer and uh, um, multiple myeloma question what could be what that could be any tenderness over that region and since one thing you have already since how long this is and then you will be asking about uh Uh, and uh, one polydipsia is quite important question over here because whenever there is a pain always ask the polydipsia question why because of hypercalcemia because all the cancer any type of cancer which has metastasized could be me melanoma is the prostate anything it causes hypercalcemia and how this is asked is asked about uh, do you need uh, to drink more water because the calcium cause polydipsia so always ask this question in in such scenario always then ask about the risk factor questions have you been drinking plenty of water any previous uti these are the risk factor and and you need to ask this question in pma only family they said only and these are the red flag i ask you what are the red flag quida quina never forget to ask these four questions we have talked about in any of the back exam never never forget this is a crime if even you assume that this is pyelonephritis it is a clear case of pyelonephritis and back ache with pyelonephritis but never assume that ask about cauda equina four question because this is the red flag we cannot forget about this okay uh then come toward the oet observation gp abdominal examination here you will be doing the abdominal examination it's quite important for you to do abdominal examination back ache and uh there is a straight leg raising test you will be doing here i i forgot to written because it is the written in the other scenarios straight leg raising test you will be doing urine dipstick routine blood test x ray k u b this is all what will you will be doing on this okay he will be saying you in this scenario dips urine dipstick is positive for blood okay so your diagnosis is actually renal colic because you will be asking when you will be asking the question he will be giving you this information and because it's in in the region it's in the uh, like groin region or loin region and that that would be like you you will know about that it is because it's the infection as well and this is because of the renal colic and you will explain that is the renal colic stone it is the tube connecting your kidney to the bladder the pain and blood in the urine 
both tests show the renal problem. Okay, your pain and uh, uh, blood in the urine. Decision, admit the patient, give the painkiller and antimatic because he will be saying that I'm nauseating. The patient say I'm nauseating. If say no, no. You will not be giving pain, this to everybody. The patient said, yeah, I'm having nausea but no vomiting. Okay, so you will be giving antimatics. Ad admit or not, it will depend on the couple of things. This is for you to read just for your study. We need to wait to control the pain. When the pain is controlled, the patient can eat, drink, then we can send home. Otherwise, first of all, we in the pain, we always need to admit the patient. For example, in the GP surgery, if the in the other scenario we have talked about, you will not admit the patient because it's the stable patient and you are in the GP surgery and you will be uh, like making a referral uh, with the uh, urologist. Okay. Okay. Here is the treatment. You just, uh, everybody of you knows about this treatment because uh, this is a very common treatment that targeted treatment you will be ordering for CT kidney, ureter bladder and ultrasound depending on the size if it is the less than here you will be after doing this you will be involving if you are in the emergency you will be informing the urologist after that it is the work of urologist not yours you have taken the decision now the target management is to urologist or senior not you so you will be saying that we, after that I will be involved the seniors I will we will send uh, call for urology department and they will be doing CT uh, ordering this and that ultrasound for you and depending upon the size you will be given the treatment uh, and would you like to know about the treatment ask the patient he will say okay then you will be uh, if it is more than if it is less than five millimeter then watch need uh, watchful monitoring and drink a penalty of fluids and if more than the five millimeter, then what you will be doing, then again, the size is it's 10, below 10 or above the 10. If it is the below the 10, it is the medical expulsive therapy is above the 10. Then it is lithotripsy or a percutaneous nephrolithotomy. And still there are two differences if less than 20 and below, above 20. And all just give a read to all these things which I have put below then how these things works okay because you need not to tell this story to the patient it's just for your understanding otherwise this is you only involve the patient and patient says i want to know then tell this otherwise you will say i will involve the urology department and depending upon your size and your symptoms they will manage you they can give you medical impulsive therapy therapy or surgery that's it. What kind of treatment is, they can give you according to size? If you want, I can tell you. Otherwise, you will not like saying like uh, in a parent way. I'm saying this. If you have this, if, no, it's, it's not the way. You just by saying a lot of information, you will confuse the patient. And you are not uh, there to confuse the patient. You are there to like help the patient to enhance their understanding. Okay. Safety netting. If the patient, other patient that was in the GP surgery, you made a urologist referral along with like asking him, I'm going to give you the painkiller. If you need any, pain, having any pain, you will be doing this, uh, having the painkiller. Meanwhile, if you have any urinary symptom, like any, any fever, any uh, burning micturation, any pain, uh, please call 999 or you can come back to me. This is the safety net for this. Night, okay. So this, this is, we have discussed two scenarios. One was in the GP surgery and other was in the emergency. The difference is that in the GP surgery, you will not give anything. You will just uh, counsel the patient. You will be talking about these things you will be talking about there in the GP surgery. Because in the GP surgery, in the GP surgery scenario, you will be counseling the patient regarding what treatment you will be giving when I'm going to refer you. However, when you have admitted the patient, the patient is in pain. The pain is the priority. You will be relieving the pain. You will be managing the pain. You will be managing the patient acutely and you will be involving the urology, not referring, and you will be telling a very short story of this and then you will be addressing the patient. Myself. However, if you are in GP surgery, so you will, will uh, apart from painkiller, you will not be giving anything or antimatic. You can prescribe and can send home and you will be doing the safety netting 
and you will be telling all the story because the patient want to know about that there in the gp because he is stable patient he want to know that what treatment should i get okay and in the other scenario he will be in a hurry to get relief so you will in the in that situation you will not confuse the patient by telling a lot of things okay so here comes the other scenario that is the back sprain actually we will be covering three scenarios in a single go back sprain disc prolapse disc prolapse with the uh, cona cuida disc prolapse without cona cuida so this is like similarly we are discussing these three scenarios together like we we discuss acs acute condyotic syndrome it can be stable angina unstable angina we we discuss in that together way these three scenario we will be discussing in a similar approach because there is only subtle difference and we will not assume anything even the patient says okay i was playing football and and uh, then i got, got hurt it and you will not be assuming that this is because just because of the i have learned this story because the patient is 30 year old and was the back pain it it was only sprain so i will not be ruling out the other things you will not be doing this so these three scenarios you will be doing in a similar way similar approach okay uh, this is a simple start let's start with stable angina like back sprain the, the easiest one okay um, which is not uh, like not the difficult most fy in emergency patient 30 year old present with back pain assess the patient discuss the initial management squash player you are playing squash after a long time one thing you were swinging to hit back and your back twisted you were you were you experienced pain immediately the pain on your lower back is 6 out of 10 you took brufen in the pain scenario any pain scenario to just keep this thing in your mind whenever there is a pain scenario it can be anywhere always ask have you taken anything for that have you taken anything for that you when you are doing supa uh, clear uh, as you are doing supa clear as always ask have you taken anything for that did your symptom relieved after that it says okay i took pain killer okay how how was your symptom after that because you want to check the efficacy because you don't want to repeat what has already been done so that's why you need to ask that okay examination tenderness this is when you will be reaching over there they will be telling you okay first thing okay what brought you here doc i was playing bas basketball and describe the event always ask the open ended question can you tell me more about that can you describe that event for me so that patient can open up to you you need not to ask a lot of question maybe patient will be telling you four to five answer by his own self it will save your time always describe the event okay he when you describe the event then you start your stupa krs then your dd always trauma is the first then you will be asking about the enclosing spondylitis any morning stiffness you will not assume that had that because the patient has fallen down it is only it can be only because of this you will be asking other questions as well dd question what are they morning stiffness redness in your eye because describing the event you will be asking question in describing the event what you did after that uh, okay were you conscious at the time have you taken anything for that did you uh, received any treatment after that maybe he has checked to somebody before that okay ask anything about the event what event was then you will be asking uti questions again any fever just just quick this is quite quick don't get stuck into this that similarly prostate cancer any urgency any hesitancy multiple melanoma urinate more than often this, this these are the same question any tb question and cancer question these need to be asked again Uh, in the other scenario, need to be asked again. Any weight loss, any night sweats? These are the same question for TB and cancer. Okay, then there comes the red flag. In this even this scenario, if you forget to ask about red flag, you assume the thing. Even you have made the perfect diagnosis, you given the perfect treatment, you forget to ask about red flag. Examiner will assume that you have a disease. He will assume that, like the examiner will like think that you have not asked this question. How are you assuming that this is not dangerous? Back you need to always, always you need to rule out the red flag of compression in the back end. It is always, always there. Okay, so never forget. I, why I am reiterating this again and again because this is the common thing 
people used to forget. Like if in the testicular scenario, the people used to forget about the mums, and uh, because they are these things are quite red flags of that scenarios. Here, the quite red flag of this scenario uh, and cryptorchism. I'm just this. I'm going out of the way just uh, because uh, the difficulties we had. I'm telling you. In in any testicular scenario, the cryptorchism question and the scenario must be necessary. Similar here in the compression scenario, these red flags are necessary. There are their red flags are those, and here red flags are these. Okay. OET examination, uh, OBS, GP, straight leg raising. You will not forget to ask straight leg raising. You will say that straight leg raising test. I will do that. Need to check the back passage. Why? Why anybody? Anybody? Why? Why I'm saying that that time? Because I want your involvement. It is to check the sphincter, okay? Because if there is the cauda coena, in examination you are ruling out the cauda coena by doing that. Urine dipstick and chest X-ray you will be doing. He will say that tenderness is on that region. Most likely condition is back strain. You will say that, that this is not the serious condition actually. But you are told me and after your observation and taking the history. I have found that this is due to the back sprain because you have twisted your back. Look, this was quite straight scenario, but we have asked everything, and these everything we will be asking about the next two scenarios as well, because actually these things are for those two scenarios. But here you will be asking, they will say no. They will clearly say no. I don't have this, so that's why you will be easily saying that this is not the dangerous thing. I'm going to send you home. Okay, so you will. Be asking all these questions. Treatment. We will give you painkiller, ibuprofen, and medication protective with omeprazole. If the pain worsens, see your GP. It is in the ANE. ANE. Yeah, it's in the emergency department. If the pain worsens, see your GP. Give some painkiller review by your GP. Say review your GP after one week, not you, because you are in an ANE. This is where we we make our approach templated. Okay, come to me after one week, how? Oh, because he he need to see his GP after one week. We cannot waste resources of emergency by saying that come to me after one week. Okay. If the pain persists, GP can refer you for the physiotherapy. Leave that safety netting. One thing is not written over there, and that was keep yourself mobilized. It's I don't I don't know why I forgot to mention that, but here it is. Keep yourself mobilized. Never say like rest. This is the very wrong answer to these kind of people. Okay, you need to take the rest. No, rest make uh, this scenario worse. So always say like you need uh, keep yourself as much as mobilized with the painkiller uh, as on your ease. Don't do strenuous exercise. However, keep yourself mobilized. Okay. And what is safety netting? Quadra quina. Quadra quina is your safety netting. We have already talked about why this has developed. We have talked about why you are playing because without after a long time he was playing without like doing over general stretching. Will I ever be play? Yes, you will be able to play again. No problem with that. This is very simple question. The second uh, scenario is patient is twenty five year old male rushed to the emergency with ambulance following a collision which while playing rugby. He had a collision while playing rugby. Acute pain, six hour. Take the history. The collision was playing the rugby. Back pain, eight out of ten. You feel sick, but no neurological or urinary symptoms. Done. I'm not going to ask, repeat anything regarding that. But we have already talked about the red flag. We have talked about OET in the OET observation, straight leg raising, neuromuscular examination. Need to check your back passage again. Very much important. And urine dipstick and X-ray lumbar. You will be doing all that. And after this, he will say spinal tenderness and paraspinal uh, spinal tenderness and paraspinal muscle spasm will be over there. Then start explaining to the patient okay, because th this thing is. It is explaining how the uh, straight leg raising test. Maybe he will be saying, "You okay, do that." But it's not more commonly done, and you need to uh, say, "Okay, I will be doing the straight leg raising test." And if you are explaining the patient for that, I need I will be like lifting your legs and 
you you need to explain that to the people okay if if you need to perform that you will be saying that okay so we need to ar arrange an x ray this has you already been done and now the management from the information we have it's like the disc prolapse from where we will get this information on the x ray examiner will give you the reduced intervertebral disc space because you will be doing x ray otherwise if you don't say x ray he will not give you and if you say without taking the x ray you will be doing like blunder because how will you say that it is because there is no caudal vena syndrome only the symptoms are it could be any back strain back pain but when you will be asked for x ray lumbar spine region then the examiner will say this to you in reduce intervertebral disc space then you will be explaining that what you have told me as you were playing the rugby and you uh, you are hit by some other person and uh, you were having pain and this this symptom and we did some investigation examination and there was a tenderness over that and on x ray shows this from it it look like you are having intervertebral disc plaques and no explain this also called slip disc and explain this in our spine because patient you need to explain this to the patient okay then what is your decision we will give you some painkiller we will give you morphine for pain because you will be asking before the patient what you have taken if he is saying the pain is too much he has already taken the painkiller then morphine otherwise simple painkiller we cannot jump directly to the morphine no the pain is lot of pain and he has already taken the painkiller then we can jump towards the morphine otherwise no i uh, because i have uh, some, uh, uh, i i make these notes i it take me a lot of time sometimes certain things skip so it is the uh, it is a mistake over here then we are jumping direct towards the pain uh, morphine we cannot jump to the morphine directly no then what is the target you are going to refer to the orthopedic other patient with the sprain you send back home and this you are going to do arrange a urgent referral what is urgent two week time you will be doing urgent referral because uh uh no i uh, i i don't think so it's urgent i'm sorry this is not urgent referral because it is routine referral you will be doing a routine referral because there is no uh, urgency so far there so you will be doing a routine referral and orthopedic might arrange an mri and then depending upon your sign and symptom the, you will be requiring the physiotherapy you will not order physiotherapy by yourself because it's not your domain it's not your domain even in the sprain patient you will not order physiotherapy it is the gp who can order you here you are gp uh, no it is you are in emergency sorry you uh, but you cannot order physiotherapy because it is uh, it can be either uh, gp or orthopedic there is a possibility that he'll spontaneously if the pain remain problematic they might offer surgery you this is you need to explain your quest the most important thing for you is this in the targeted whenever i i have written the target there is where we involve the seniors other department this is not as much important as diagnosis explaining the diagnosis and decision and concern is important so don't rush to tell the targeted management because it's not your domain never rush to because what we have studied in our books many of us are like done the pg training as well so we want to tell everything we want to tell the special treatment first so this is not our domain there you are fy2 so think like fy2 okay so safety netting is with the cord call compression is, is the cord compression okay pain history of heavy lifting same scenario he was lifting some focus history he was lifting and uh, you can read that only he was lifting some log and he got the pain it was sudden and blah 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 and it was nothing left only the difference between this and other scenario is in this scenario there is a cord compression there is a cord compression symptom like this weakness loss of sensation over your leg and this is urgent referral this is very urgent referral this is urgent referral that was not urgent referral this is why i am like teaching these scenarios you in a combination because you should know that when i i, I should do what these three scenario are in a single row and management is different why because this is cord compression weakness loss of sensation over your right leg 
have not passed the urine eight hour urine retention is there numbness this is all this is on on your anus this is red flag what cauda quina this is cauda quina this is cord compression you will be asking the same body language the pain the pain you will be first dealing with the pain should i give you some pain killer have you taken any pain okay you will be dealing with the pain first then you will be moving onward okay the trauma oncologist mandala you will be asking a little bit question not struck much in this ask uh, um, then go towards the red flag in the red flag they will be telling you the real story then again you will be doing the all this we have already talked about spinal tendon and this will be there and straight you will be doing the straight leg raising and the straight leg raising you will be explaining that the same on the management the positive finding the strength is usually telling the according standing then you will be telling that this is the disc prolapse with complication with some complication that is cord compression okay this is a big difference this is called cord aquina syndrome as well is the quite serious condition need urgent intention by a specialist so your domain is over by what giving the pain that's it so what you will be doing my decision is i will be giving you the medication suggest pain muscle relaxant and pain killer and i will put the theater why here why i have i have made this bold because could it always forget these secondary thing that's why i made this bold i will put catheter why is having the urinary retention because this is one of the problem the pain is not the only problem the other problem is urinary retention relieve that symptom as well i will be putting the treater do x ray refer to urgent basis okay they might doing and if you are in emergency because it must be in emergency so what you will be saying i am going to call send an urgent call for the urology department they are going to come and they are going to see you okay and what they are be doing they are doing these all thing and what depending upon your sign and symptom they will be like making and uh, maybe they require a surgery maybe they will be managing you medical so back pain last scenario of the back pain is prostate cancer fy2 surgery 70 year old with a back pain patient information here it is given the for the last 6 month okay it is the chronic one so first thing that had come in your mind is not acute it's the chronic one so we will be thinking about the chronic thing is that's why we are ask second question where is the pain here since how long 6 month okay our narrowing off our concept very narrowing but we will be we we'll, still we will be asking all the questions gradually getting worse the pain is dull worse when move around kilos of weight and all that you will be asking all these questions urine frequency hesitancy dribbling and urinary quest the uh, we will be doing this urinary uh, stations as well there are only urinary stations in, in that we will be asking all these questions dribbling hesitancy is like uh, how is uh, like flow and all these questions we will be asking but here we need to ask this question as well okay why because we have got this is something like you will be asking uti question and collagen the spot because and we will be asking and collagen spondylitis question because this is as well a chronic condition we will be what question we can ask morning stiffness redness in eyes another thing uh, writer syndrome uh, writer disease what but the people were calling i don't know one of you told the scenario because that um, is in collagen spondylitis with any of uh, Uh, like uh, problem with pe any uh, uh, this is called writer disease i don't know what is the other name you can ask its question as well because it's with the ankylosing spondylitis as well then uti then you will be asking the prostate questions these are the prostate questions urine urgency hesitancy and all these questions multiple meloma urinate more than often okay and uh, multiple infection because in multiple meloma there are a lot of multiple infection so we will be asking this question then the tb cancer question then uh, there is another question that are the red flag of the general cancer question what are the general question weight loss like we will be ruling out tb and any cancer symptom any cancer which we call generally red flag as well so here the red flag are again we will be asking this question as well because any cancer can cause cauda aquina syndrome any cancer of the spine can cause cauda aquina syndrome so we can not forget to ask red flags of cord compression as well here okay so here uh, tb and cancer symptom these are the general tb and cancer what are they 
that can be decrease in appetite, decrease in weight, you need to ask this question. And you need to ask this question in all these scenarios. Similar, you will not be changing anything, only you, these are the same thing we, we, we have already discussed diagnosis with the, you will be adopting here the suspected cancer growth. What, which thing came in your hair? Because the patient did not know that he's having prostate cancer. Because he's telling you that in the urine, there's a urine problem, there's a backache, there, he's having blood in the urine. All things are supporting your diagnosis of what? Uh, prostate cancer. So here you will be doing the PSA as well. I, I'm, I don't know, I have put that uh, or not over here because you will be doing the PSA test as well here. Uh, if you have forget to ask here, you will be doing in the, the CN as well. Because if, if we have not asked there, then you can ask the PSA is the specific test. You can ask here uh, uh, when you are making some decision, okay? So what is suspected cancer approach? Again, I, I, I want you to learn this again and again. I'm going to read this for you. Why? Because I, I, I always highlight those things which are always difficult for you guys. I know that this is one of the difficult things to talk what is suspected cancer approach because you have to give uh, the warning shots. You have to give the warning shots. What are the warning shots? You have to make the patient mind to some extent that the something serious is coming. Mr. Johns, I am a bit concerned about your symptom you have. The reason of my concern is that you have back pain for quite long term. Now you have also started losing your weight, have the urinary symptom. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. I'm repeating this for you. So, unfortunately, I'm sorry to tell you that the cancer of the or prostate can be present in a similar way as you are having. You can say, you can add another sentence in before telling this. Uh, the symptom like this could be because of the infection. However, it can be prostate cancer. Okay. So this is all the, this is called the suspected cancer course. Almost 10 to 50 scenarios in our course are suspected cancer. 10 to 50. So learn this once and you will be having all. So then do a pause. There is a difference between breaking the bad and suspected cancer approach. Don't mix them because the suspected cancer approach is because you are not having the surety. So that's why that's why I need to refer you on the urgent basis with the two-week time. Always suspected cancer approach followed by the two-week urgent referral. For that, we can make sure or either you are having this or not. So this is suspected cancer approach because you cannot be saying that like in, in that... You cannot, would you like to hear with somebody else? No, we cannot be that dramatic. That is for confirmed diagnosis. Biopsy report showed that he is having breast cancer. Now it comes to tell you the that dramatic approach. I call that dramatic approach because we are not used to that thing too much. Okay, so here we cannot be that dramatic. You, you have to be sympathetic, empathetic, but benefit of doubt you are giving to you by saying that actually the situation you are having this, this and that, this could be simple infection. However, I have seen in my clinical practice, this could be sometime prostate cancer. Whatever word you want to use, you can use by your own wording. Literally, they don't mind. But whatever come in, in like in on your language, it should be fluent, okay? Patients say could be something else. Uh, there is a possibility it could be something else, but we need to do something, uh, some test for the diagnosis. That's why I'm going to refer you, okay? Two-week referral time, I've told you that, and you, you will be going X-ray, X-ray spine, and PSA, never forget to say. Then what is the targeted? Again, the tar targeted would be CT scan or MRI uh, and ultrasound. And uh, you will be asking if if it comes if it comes you will if you want me to discuss the treatment option I can discuss with you but you need to take the patient concern don't tell by like a parrot telling okay we we, we are like uh, sending you and they are going to this 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 no 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 don't uh, uh, we 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 don't want the patient to be fearful that he he said okay I, I'm not going anywhere I'm going home okay. So you will be very cordial with the patient and you will be saying, should you like to discuss the treatment option with me? In the case, it, it, 
turn out to be prostate cancer is that then you will be saying that involving the patient not saying by like in a parrot way okay long term you will be safety netting what is the safety netting quadriquina hematuria and if always in the cancer suspected zone one safety net can be the safety netting as well for that in my first third one is always there is that is if you do not get appointment or gut check within a time of two weeks or you find any difficulty you can contact but because you will make an appointment for him and you will make sure that she should be get check within a time of two weeks it's your responsibility okay he says that is the it could be pancreatic as i say no this could never be a pancreatic okay? with very much confidence because the straight answer should be very straight answer okay we are done with the backache we are done with the backache approach no now it is um, headache approach we are going to discuss the headache approach and uh, 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 let me tell you that it is very much important the headache approach in uh, the, this is this is occurring very commonly this occurs uh, this comes in the real exam very often and most of the time and uh, people find it difficult uh, to do headaches man i want you guys to tell me the dd is right for dd everybody of you and send it in your inbox for dd of headache ah, the scenario is that a patient come with headache what are your dds for dd everybody of you for dd yeah it is intracranial hemorrhage actually okay tension headache cluster headache all of them space occupying lesion tumor yeah these are all migraine great great zabardast okay ah uh, now we start headache again stupa krs approach we have already talked about that hypertension is one of exactly or titus media is one of that exactly stupa krs unilat first thing after doing that it is unilateral first question before even starting the stupa krs we need to ask you unilateral bile this is the first after where is in the headache head unilateral bile so add this in your stupa krs unilateral or bile this should be after doing stupa krs unilateral bilateral it will give you a lot of information and you will be having your diagnosis over there most of the diagnosis will be there not all of them so the patient say okay i'm having headache all around my head and then then you need to ask all of the questions around okay here severity is quite important ask one question in headache is that the worst headache of your life is this the worst headache of your life why subarachnoid hemorrhage so we go with what our strategy is in the regarding the dd why i am asking i only work on the dd because the only problem is the dd and problem is the management but good dd you have the good management these stations are quite easy okay dd first thing subarachnoid why it is the first because it is the dangerous most glaucoma why it is above because uh it is the dangerous one of the dangerous migraine it is it should be then cluster headache sinusitis tumor uh, gca hangover headache pain killer and tension headache keep in mind like red flag of the other we have already discussed was cordaquina here the three things are red flag in all headache scenario what it is gca meningitis and stroke gca meningitis and stroke only three are and what question we need to ask for the meningitis you know about the neck stiffness and photophobia you know about the stroke question any weakness any focal weakness in your body or any problem with your speaking the third thing is uh, gca what question could be asked regarding the gca any problem with your vision you need to ask that any problem with your vision because asking the problem with your vision will be ruling out two things glaucoma and this thing gca problem with the vision and any tenderness on your head who will be asking uh, like you will be asking around the jaw claudication any problem when when you chew and any you will be asking about the jaw claudication and will be asking about these are the because why i always reiterate more 
and more on red flag because to be the safe doctor red flag comes first you cannot treat the patient but you cannot let the patient die it is the chance that safe doctor cannot treat the patient but you should be able to not the patient die so for that the red flag is always always above because if you have not ruled out the red flag and the patient is having one of the red flag, you send home and the patient come on the other day on the emergency then you are in better trouble okay so always keep the red flag whenever you go for a scenario for example when i am outside the cubicle there is a record what address the patient and nothing written over there only the patient name age address the patient sir and there are one and half minute what i will be doing that i will be making myself memorize that i will not forget about the safety netting i will not forget about the red flag so this because you, you you don't know about anything what is inside so this thing you you need to get yourself memorized that i will not forget this okay so this is the red flag the first is migraine with out aura and second is with aura scenario so similar uh, you will be asking because you will be uh, whenever you will be asking the question regarding the migraine you will be asking question regarding the aura with or without aura any problem before the headache do you have any sensation any smell anything before the start of the headache so this is aura okay so you need to ask always in the migraine scenario there are three migraine scenarios and these are very much common to become in your exam the migraine scenario and the most common is coming is the migraine with the uh, menstrual migraine this is the we will be discussing that shortly okay so when you have not asked about the aura and you are asking uh, the, there is a scenario regarding the migraine and you have taking the migraine with the uh, menstrual migraine and you will be giving the patient uh, uh, in that scenario because one of the treatment for is after the painkiller is not working it, it is the ocp CO, cop hormonal therapy and you, with the aura you are giving the cocp you are killing the patient because this is contraindication migraine with the aura um uh, cocp co combined or, uh, oral contraceptive is contraindicated for migraine with aura so you need to need to rule out the migraine with aura is with aura or without aura okay okay now let's come towards our scenario the patient presented with headache to cabuprofen paracetamol but not help this is her second time coming in the emergency take the history you will be doing all the okay headache on the left side started suddenly does not radiating doesn't make nothing is making is better nothing is light make it worse patient feel nauseous but not vomiting blurry vision with headache blurry vision with headache always like uh, give you sense of glaucoma but you will be exploring this and you will be know this is not glaucoma otherwise fit and well because this is multiple episodes and in, in multiple episode is like very much common in migraine there is no headache uh, cluster headache scenario but cluster headache is not uh, Uh, difference is between cluster headache and migraine is regarding the duration if you want me then i i can discuss the uh, cluster headache with but there is no in our syllabus cluster headache is not there so it is it is quite similar towards the migraine but the problem is that the cluster type of headache small headache for multiple times and migraine is very long headache and it's not the cluster type another thing is one thing is uh there can be watering of eyes in the cluster headache it's very less likely in this thing both can be unilateral both can be bilateral this is not the any difference but most of the time both are unilateral so you can just read, give a quick read on cluster headache versus migraine because there are you, know, you can find it quite it's quite easy thing you going to get on the internet migraine with aura uh, similar in the gp surgery made appointment talk to address the concern this is in the gp this is in the emergency this is the difference okay so always keep that difference in your mind had headache for past 3 month unilateral throbbing feel sick no vomiting before headache usually get flushing of light this is your aura this is aura okay take a brofen for headache aunt has tumor she is she had the similar symptom no this is her concern so when we do ice when we do ice 
I have talked about doing the eyes. This is what she is going to tell you in eyes. What AIs? AIs? Anything else you want to tell me? Maybe she's not telling. You. What is your main query? Do you have any idea what's going on with you? What is your main query? She will say, "My main query is that I am having brain tumor because my aunt does." Why you think like that? Because my aunt died of that. So you have not explored that. This is where uh, you will lose your marks. You need to explore what is the query because you need to address that. This is not the brain tumor because you are having the migraine. If you have not explored that, you will you cannot tell the patient. Okay, okay. Uh, now uh, I don't know what what has happened. This uh, there is some problem. Let me check. Just give me a minute. Just, just a minute. Just a minute. I'm, I'm going. Because there, there's a problem with that document, so I'm opening the other document. Can, can you people see my screen now? My screen is visible or not?
Uh, yes, it is visible. So we have started these these scenarios like we we will be asking the direct question subarachnoid first of DD is subarachnoid hemorrhage worst headache of my life you have already asked in the stupa krs you asked this question worst headache of my is is that worst headache of you, you forget you can ask over here then glaucoma visual problem any hellos migraine question you you have already like ruled out the in in the uh, while while you asking these question in the stupa krs cholesterol headache, watering of eyes or redness of eyes, you need to ask. Then sinusitis, headache, worse in the bending forward and nasal discharge, tumor question like in the morning headache, morning headache and progressive headache because the progressive thing you have already done. Progressive and morning headache is very typical with the tumor. Then with space of opening lesion, you can say GCA, jaw claudication, visual problems. Okay, these are the DD questions you need to ask. Then uh, rule out the red flags. Then the, in the family history, there are a lot of questions you need to ask here. In PMA, Holly family case of colon is quite important, quite important because a lot of scenarios you will pick only in the PMA of Holly family case. What precipitating factor like stress, COCP, lack of sleep, not eating on the time. You need to ask all these questions. Where in PPMA Holly family? Hangover, headache, you need to ask, he's, he's drinking alcohol. When last time you drink alcohol? Maybe because he's drinking alcohol all the night and he's having the hangover headache, okay? Painkiller, you are taking what? I'm taking, I'm having headache and I'm taking a lot of painkiller. Overuse of painkillers can cause headache, okay? So you need to ask that. Tension headache, again, you need to ask a lot of questions on the desertoli because of the any tension, because of the, any stress, any job, patient can have tension headache. And this is all around the band-like headache. This is all the character is band-like headache. Menstrual history, you need to take if, the, if she's a female, you need to ask the, take the menstrual history and the pregnancy history because uh, if you take the uh, menstrual history, you need to ask by chance you are pregnant. When was your last menstrual period? You need to ask the pregnancy question as well. Then it comes towards the uh, examination. And in headache question, observation is important because blood you need to check the blood pressure of every headache patient. Then the fundoscopy is important. You need to take the fundoscopy. Why glaucoma? You need to rule out the glaucoma. You need to do the cranial examination and neurological examination. You need to do all these examinations, okay? And you will be sending non-specific blood tests, like you will be saying, which are the routine blood test, okay? From you, what you had told me, your nursing is, is uh, unilateral and second in a one month with the nausea. I suspect that you are having migraine. Okay, so I have read, I have given a lot of information that you need to read all of that. I'm just telling you that this is another thing you can read by yourself because this is just for you, not to tell the patient. For example, I'm going to give you the painkiller. You need to say I'm going to give you the painkiller. You are taking already taking some painkiller. Then you 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 need to change. She says, okay, I'm taking. I, I have taken the brufen. You not you no know, no. You are, that is not working. She has taken the brufen ten minutes ago. You are waiting. Okay, you have taken the proof and you are not saying I'm giving you then another painkiller. Then you are going to give the antimatics. Antimatics and painkiller are very much like you need to give both of these drugs immediately to the patient with migraine. Antimatic and painkiller. Because they are they are always nauseating. Okay, even they are not nauseating. I have read on the NH website, they, they are helpful. Antimatics in the migraine are helpful. So you are going to give by any anyway his. Having nausea or not, okay. So, which painkiller first? Paracetamol, NSAID, aspirin. These are the options. For example, you have given them this, then do you will switching to this, then switching to this, whatever she has taken. So, in the pain question, I told you what is important. What you are already, doing, what you are already. Doing. So, you this is abortive therapy. Now, your decision is abortive therapy. You, for example, you have given the aspirin. She patient says, okay, I have taken aspirin. I've been taking for so long. It's not working. I'm taking OPI. It's not working. So what you are going to do that, then you are going to switch to Tripton. Sumatriptan. You're going to say, I'm going to give you another drug that is very specialized to make rain. Tripton is always for an abortive therapy, but it's not the first line. It's the second line because all these are the first line. Tripton is not the first line. You have given them the NSAID paracetamol. That's not working. Given the OPI, it's not working. 
then you should jump to the preptal. And that is abortive therapy. That is not for the prevention. For the prevention is topiramate. This is the difference. Krypton is not similar to topiramate. Tropi topiramate is for prevention. Krypton is for abortive therapy to relieve the symptom immediately. Okay? So keep in mind. Oh, but it is the second therapy. Second line therapy. During the attack, we will keep you in the resting room. Because why? Because uh, in the dark rest, uh, resting room. Because most of the people get uh, symptom relief. Because, okay? So this is what you have done by yourself. Okay, so what next? What next? Long term. So what advice do doctors do that patients say, okay, doc, I'm glad. Because we are discussing two scenarios together. One is emergency and one is, uh, the other one is GP. So for the GP scenario, you will be discussing all these things to the patient and you will be talking about the prevention. Here you will be talking about the prevention as well. For example, patients say, okay, I'm stable. You have to leave the pain. Okay, tell, tell me, doc, why I'm having, is the patient concern? In the GP, it's not the patient concern. It's your duty to tell. But in the emergency, it is more likely the patient concern. He's asking, doc, why I'm having again and again? What should I do? I'm having this for the last one year. I'm having again and again. So then comes the long term. And in the GP, it is always the long term. You need to tell the long-term story as well with the body therapy, okay? What is that? Identify the trigger and avoid. The most important thing, which you always forget. Tell the patient to identify the, how you who can they keeping the migraine diary. And these things are to be, one, two, three things you remember, don't worry. You say the migraine diary and patient, and he will give you the marks. You say, identify and trigger, uh, avoid the trigger for that. You need to keep the migraine diary, that's it. You can say one or two things if you remember, otherwise no. Medicine and supplement. What medications are required for? Propanolol is the first line. If it is contraindicated or it's not working, then to pyramid. Even if it's contraindicated, we can use the calcium channel blocker, but that uh, to pyramid is the second lug. And we can always use these. These are not the body therapy. These are the like patient is having, when, when we, we give these drugs, when everyday life of the patient is getting affected by his migraine, otherwise no, he's having episodic, okay, we will, we will give the therapy, we, give, we, we can give the propanolol. Yeah, yeah, it is adjuvant, exactly, it is adjuvant, but when we need to describe that, when we need to prescribe that, when the patient everyday life is getting affected, and how you know, you will ask. Where you will ask, impact on your life. Where PMA desa tolly, I, there you will ask, is because this is not chronic condition. Is that impacting your life? And this thing you will be asking in which scenario? In the GP scenario. Mostly in the GP scenario. You will can never forget to ask in the GP scenario. Then you will be talking about the, so you will be saying that, okay, these, these are the options. Acupuncture is the option as well. This is also, I, I always brought this from the NHS website. This is there, acupuncture is there. And seeing the specialist, when you can refer to specialist, these are which specialists? These are migraine specialists. There are migraine specialists. When, when it is not, you cannot control the treatment above mentioned, all that measure has been taken and it's not effective. It's the resistant, now become the resistant, then you can send to the GP. So it should be in your information. You will not be needing that. Okay? Because the migraine GP treat, you treat the migraine. Depression, you treat the depression. GP treat the migraine, GP treat the depression. Okay? It's your domain. Uh, again, so you need to do the safety netting for stroke, meningitis and GCA. And this, this is the migraine trust that you, you should tell the patient, educate the patient, you know about the migraine trust. There is an organization, you can register with that so that you can have all the information and any help from that. So this is, this is for your information. This is not, this is for passing the exam with 10, not with the seven. For, uh, most of the station, you need seven. First, you need to touch seven of every station. Then, then you need to go for that 
then in some okay so this is you need to tell these these thing because there are a lot of other things to tell okay how you will again because i have explained this too much because for your information but don't get confused that you need to tell all the thing for most of the scenario i have put only little information but here i have put a lot because it can change the scenario it can this is for the patient concern the patient can ask the concern if they ask the concern you should have the answer but then for this is important scenario that is why i have put everything many things i have most of the thing i have copied from the nhs nhs website okay this is again i have brought from the nhs website these are two treatment for the pregnant and breastfeed just give a read to this prevention of menstrual preventing the menstrual headache related this is other scenario is with the same scenario it is 17 year old some um, appointment with a headache this is the menstrual headache everything will be the same you will be asking everything regarding the migraine only the additional thing you will be doing asking about pregnancy and menstruation you will be taking the detailed menstrual and history and she will be telling you regarding that and here well what you will be doing you will be telling the diagnosis the migration head rate since the pep is not working because here look these two drugs are not working so you can give another medication that is sumatriptan always keep in mind that is nasal why because this is you know this is 17 year old if it were like 21 year old or 19 year old that was the oral however if it is below the 18 then it is the nasal sumatriptan and this is everybody knows about that the triptans are given in the nasal when it is below the 18 year old so here you will say you will be given the nasal triptan okay uh, okay what advice the keeping the diary of headache with the menstrual again the, you need to keep the diary so that the relationship can be established between that in a perfect way and we will be giving you the painkillers and uh, if the painkiller is not relieving then if uh, then you can prescribe what and you, you just read this as well okay hormonal therapy and non hormonal therapy and first one is non hormonal therapy it's not working then you can go for the hormonal therapy what no bleeding no migraine you put the patient on uh, this is the uh, this is actually uh, this is kind of functional disorder sometime because uh, not functional exactly but we say no bleeding no migraine so we stop the bleeding how oh, cocps okay there are the, you can read that therapies as well follow up in 3 months and advise relaxation adequate rest eat time and all these lifestyle modification in any functional disorder is quite important not only here in ibs in migraine uh, in uh, premenstrual syndrome all that um, comes um, with uh, lifestyle modification and again here do the safety netting safety netting for what the three things okay tension added this is quite easy scenario we have done with the migraine three scenarios then it is the tension headache tension headache uh, presented to the gp surgery with headache focus history and discuss the management bilateral headache work related you need to take the focus social history you need to take what in this focus social history but not forget to take all these things because you cannot assume you cannot assume by just by this headache uh, um, because you have memorized this scenario you have to ask all these question okay now are always doing this all these examination and then this is the tension headache on the both side and it's the band like headache it is associated with stress and the cn is routine blood test giving the painkiller doing nothing like in this scenario you will be doing nothing and giving the painkiller and explain that on you can take the over the counter painkillers however you need to be very conscious don't take painkiller very much because they can fall and other headache that is misuse headache that is called uh, painkiller related headache okay so you need to like this uh, i have put this in a bold way because you need to know that you are giving the painkiller for the tension headache and you will be putting him another threat that is the headache due to that painkiller okay so you need to tell that in the long term counseling sessions are required why in this you cannot forget to tell about the talking throb not it is the cbt is the counseling session actually because you need to deal with your stress uh, involve yourself in the deal in the uh, healthy activities in the sports in, in anything like that make your lifestyle healthy okay 
history of alcohol intake in this scenario everything will be normal nothing will uh, other thing you will you will be going with your approach you will be following your approach he will be having throbbing headache the start la last night is the acute headache you will be thinking about something else in the end you will find out that he is having the headache only because of uh, hangover because he have been drinking all the night okay so you will be doing all that and what will be the management management would be you have been drinking multiple type of cocktails it seems you have hangover headache decision i'm going to give you the paracetamol advise rest and drink a plenty of water this and other scenario we already all bit similar lifestyle modification asking about the social history lot this is the same scenario okay so don't drink empty stomach drink a water or or non fizzy drink between alcoholic these are the lifestyle modification we are going to advise to the patient okay in this just give a read to this uh, what will be your decision giving the pain killer and telling about don't take a lot of pain killer because it can cause another headache and if you have to take for very long you need to take with the uh, omeprazole however uh, these lifestyle modifications you are required what what are they drink do, do not drink too much drink with the described amount with which are yeah yeah of course of course in in every case if the patient drinking you need to ask one two question more how much when you drink last time that's it but you but you can be smart in that you 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 can be smart in that we have these diagnoses these uh, in our mind we have all these dds in our mind we need to be smart in that because in the end you, you you will memorize all of that i know that everybody memorize all of this uh, next scenario is subarachnoid hemorrhage subarachnoid yeah. what is important in that worst headache what is important that worst headache of it please take the perform the this is in the a emergency department the patient is sitting on the bed holding his head facing down close eyes similar we have seen another scenario the patient is like oh, like sitting like this literally like this way oh i mean you going with the pain so what you need to do take this a non verbal and verbal clue and empathize the patient offer something and don't say offer pain pill offer something what you have you can offer some candy no i'm kidding offer something like a uh, patient uh, patient need at the time a, a, a acute relief of the symptom this is in the initial uh, in my, my my when i given the orientation in that i have taught you that whenever there is a big patient concern always treat that first acute thing first acute thing first okay you can say okay 
a dark i can you can ask a question are, are you like comfortable talking or you can talk with counselor talk to something to something to something i'm a lot of pain so much like worst headache of my life then you need to offer some pain killer then patient will be talking to you you say that okay i'm going to give you the pain killer i'm going to give you painkiller some you can say any you can say just painkiller okay then you okay tell me more about that then you will be taking all the history in this again hypertension history is important his pmma oli family desert oli is important over this because in this you will have the clue from there you have had the migraine and hoyo but you have nap he is having had a migraine i think this is the most difficult scenario of our headaches now this one because he is having migraine as well in the history so he, that is so confusing for you like, but you need to learn that because he is saying the worst headache of my life and you need to take all the history and he he is compliant with his medication for the migraine and you need to ask more questions regarding if the doctor asks you the worst headache of your life you say yes i am not sure yes it is the worst headache you have neck pain but do not rash neck pain but do not rash this is what not meningitis you are ruling out the meningitis as well because the meningitis scenario is headache as well so these are the question you need to uh, examiner will ask in the end examiner prompt is candidate who want to perform exam tell them normal last term ask the candidate how do you manage the patient if the candidate give want to give the pain killer ask the which pain killer because i am going to tell you which pain killer come again asking the same question no change pma holly family desert all you will completing you will be doing fundoscopy you will you, you will not assuming that how you will can assume that really all that you will do, unfortunately what you have told me so far this this seems like you are internal bleed you will say i suspect it seems you will not say you are having because you have not done a ct scan how you can say that is internal hemorrhage you cannot say that yes you are having that you are having the suspicion and say that in a very uh, uh, like a confident way how you will manage the patient you will admit the patient keep monitoring give the analgesia which analgesia morphine it is the morphine i have not written there it is the morphine oxygen and nemodipine never forget to tell nemodipine it carry marks nemodipine because only nemodipine is the uh, it it it's all the help in the, these three things help in decreasing the pain nemodipine morphine and oxygen give the morphine morphine oxygen and nemodipine why it is it do dilatation nemodipine do dilatation that decreases the pain yeah exactly inform the scenario uh, senior i uh, involve the senior, uh, senior do order ct scan of the head and this is the examiner going to ask you this is not for the patient you can, you will not tell the patient if your this not come through then we will be doing this no examiner will intervene okay if you do ct scan and ct scan comes to be normal what you going to do later he can ask you and in this he is going to he is sure going to ask you and what you going to say i'm going to do lumbar puncture what you going to do see in the lumbar puncture i'm going xanthochromia and when you can see the xanthochromia after 12 hours you cannot see the xanthochromia that's why lumbar puncture after the after uh, start of the symptom cannot be done before the 12 hours because xanthochromia appear after 12 hours so you cannot do that after the lumbar puncture after 2 hours you doing the lumbar puncture is the 12 hour okay that's for the examiner not for the patient so you have told all these things to the patient everything is done he your scenario is done and in this scenario examiner will intervene and he will say tell me these things acute sinusitis this is also very good scenario and common scenario to come ever to you have made appointment talk to the patient head cough runny nose flu like symptom very typical scenario in the past headache he will say i have a headache where behind my eyes behind behind my forehead it's very very like you will read in back but never forget was all those person again i i say never assume that we can say okay i'm having headache behind my ear behind my eyes 
you say, okay, you are having, you just ask these questions regarding sinusoidal question and forget to ask questions. And then you will come and you will say, I have done everything perfectly. I have diagnosed and I have like given the best treatment, but I feel GMC people are not good with me. So they are actually cruel. So we need to be very cautious. Okay. The, that you will come towards is, you will be management because the DD, I'm not telling you because it's the same. It is the same. Because you will be asking all the questions, anything else. We will be following our approach. Headache, okay, he'll be telling the story of headache. Anything else, he'll tell you, yeah, I had a car. I had a He will not telling here. You will be asking uh, any long-term medical condition. You'll be having this. He will be telling you, yes, I had a car. I, he will give you some clue easily. So here you will be asking about sinusoidal question, headache, Worse on bending, nasal discharge, nasal polyp. You will be asking the question regarding the nasal polyp. You will be asking this question, okay? Nasal polyp. Regarding the nasal polyp, you will be asking the question. Anything coming out of your nose, like you can ask very simple question. Then in the PMA only family, desapoltoli, in the sinusoidal question, always ask about the asthma and allergy. Do you have allergy to anything? Are you allergic to anything? Are you having long-term medical condition like asthma? Are you taking any long-term medication like aspirin, anything? Okay. Because specifying the thing carry you more more. Okay. So rest of the thing you will be asking and dying from what you have, I have that you have sinusitis that is inflammation of your bone of your face. Okay. This is called sinusitis and offer painkiller. And if if the symptoms are more than 10 days, then you will be offering the steroids, nasal spray. And it, it is a greenish discharge because he's saying that discharge, then you will be taking that discharge. Okay, what do you have more? I have discharge. What type? How much? What is the color? What is the smell? You will be asking that discharge question there. Okay, after asking them, then if it is a greenish discharge, it is with a fever, and you will be prescribing what? What antibiotic? And here again, before describing antibiotic, you, you would have asked the question of allergy. allergy. Yes, I'm allergic to penicillin. Then you will be saying, you will be saying that I'm going to prescribe you the antibiotic, but it will be doxycycline, not the penicillin as you are penicillin allergic. Because you want to tell the examiner that I know this concept that if the, he's penicillin allergy, I'm not going to give the penicillin. Long term follow up in one week, we can arrange. Okay. One thing, red flag here. Okay, I'm, I'm, I, I was, I forgotten. What is the red flag over here? GCA meningitis has stroke. One is the cancer. Additional red flag. You will be asking blood stain and weight loss because sinus cancer of the sinus present in the same level. And what is then? There is the blood coming out of your nasal discharge and weight loss. These are the again red flag. You need to ask these two questions in the red flags. Okay? In the sinusitis scenario, and uh, if if you find any, and you why you are ordering the CT scan to rule out that, but because it's even not having the red flag, you cannot. You you will be like re refer for CT scan. Why? Because you want to rule out that is not having any problem with sinus cancer. Okay. Safety netting is the same. We have been talking about. When referral to, uh, this is for you to read. When the referral to ENT is needed, if needed, if the recurrent episode, more than three episodes in a year, it would be routine referral to home ENT because it's the ENT problem. Okay, you will be asking ENT questions. And here you will be doing which examination? More ENT examination as well. You will be doing ear, no throat examination as well. You will mention that. Though he will not ask you to do that, but you will mention that. When do need ENT urgent referral? When mass or polyp is present or blood stain, similar I have talked about, if there is a red flag of cancer, you will be doing urgent referral with, what is urgent referral? Two weeks. And what is routine referral? Six to six weeks to three months. Okay, then the last scenario of today, uh, finally, this is the GCS scenario. And good news is that we have already done that. We have already done that in polymyalgia aromatica. I'm, I'm just going to um, describe you a little bit because this is the scenario we have already done. The patient will be coming with a uh, headache. This is very much, when I 
first time saw the scenario, it was very uneven for me because I have already read the GC scenario with visual problem or the tenderness. I have all because he says it's in the red. Because the patient is they are true. This is true. The patient is not able to differentiate between the tenderness and headache. For him, it is the equal. Okay. So he will say, I am having headache. So you will be exploring the headache. And after that, you will uh, you will get some clue where, where you will be ruling out your red flags. Then you will have the clue. And when it like look, look at here. You will be doing the similars, all the things with the headache. How you will know that it is the GC scenario, giant cell arthritis. He say, I'm having headache. And you will be asking all the questions without, you are not touching the patient. You, you are taking the history. And when you reach over here in GCA, you will be asking any jaw claudication, any visual problem. Patient say, yes, I'm having jaw as well. I'm ha you have any problem while combing? Yes, when I was combing there, I, I got tenderness. Okay. Any visual symptom? Yeah, I, 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 I can't see for the last one day in a better way. So here, where you get the clue, if you do not ask these questions, you say, I don't, you see, it's not important. You will, you will fail this. Then, okay, now I have seen that it is what? Now I have seen that it is the GC scenario. I want to confirm that I will be asking the PMR questions. What are PMR questions? Muscle stiffness, any, any shoulder stiffness, any joint pain, okay, because and GCA is associated with PMR. So I am confirming that he's having this, okay? So I'm asking all the questions regarding the PMR. One or two of them, they are going to say positive, other will be the negative. And I'm asking uh, also the jaw cloud equation, never forget. Ne How will you ask? Do you have any pain while chewing? Okay, while eating? Okay, do you have any pain while combing? Like, do you have any pain while lifting? While the combing, he can have shoulder pain as well. He can have tenderness as well, okay? So one scenario, you can do the both of them. Then you will be uh, taking all the history, history of OCPs, all these things, not sleeping well and all that. You will be doing that. And then here, examination will be observation, cranial. You will check, you will say, I will check for the scalp tenderness. I will ask the patient to lift his head like this because it is the PMR. You can ask the patients, can you stand up for me? One, don't ask both of them, ask only one. Don't, I don't think so, you need to ask this as well. Open your mouth for me, you need to ask this because you want to check the jaw claudication. Palpation of the shoulder, thighs and tenderness and eye movement. Okay, don't do all that. Scalp tenderness, do this. Ask the arm to lift up and open mouth, that's enough. Now come towards the eye. I need to examine your eye. For that, I need to check for the eye reflex, visual acuity, eye movement, and fundoscopy. You will say that and patient will give you some time. Examiner will give you. You will say that. You will should say that complete eye examination is required. Over here, okay? The management. Here the management part is quite tricky. For management, you should know where you are. So where are you? Where are you? GP. Still you are in GP. The patient is having the eye symptom. Eye symptoms are the worst in GC study. Eye symptoms are worse in PMR study. So your red flag in this study is eye symptoms. So the worst urgent referral is for eye scenario. What you will be doing? I am. I'm going to sending you immediately with the ophthalmologist right now, right now, not two week time, not one urgent. Not the cancer urgency right now. And what you are going to do? I am going to give you the prednisolone IV. If the eye symptom, I want you to memorize this because this is important. What you need to give because the patient, if you are not giving the prednisolone right now and, and you are sending him, this is crime. You are going to give steroid. If the eye symptom, I am going to give you what? Methyl prednisolone IV. I'm, I'm, I'm repeating IV methyl prednisolone. I'm going to sending. Okay. Second scenario. Patient is saying no eye symptom. This is a, with the eye symptom. This scenario is with the no eye symptom. Jaw claudication. You are going to still prescribe the antibiotic uh, uh, steroid, but not IV oral. Okay. Any, any, any sign of like GCA. 
you are going to prescribe yourself before sending before even esr coming because you are going to send for esr and you are going to send for crp before their results are coming you are going to give the steroid i'm going to like want your comparison with pmr scenario in pmr scenario we waited for the result because we were we want, that was not an emergency we wanted to make sure that it is the even in this scenario on the cost benefit analysis we made the wrong decision wrong uh, uh, like uh, diagnosis still we can justify giving because we are saving her eyes we are saving her life okay Uh, uh, I uh, because amoxicillin fugox uh, symptoms are uh, I think it's uh, because I have read for so long ago. <laughs> it is like when the curtains are getting down. That is amoxicillin fugox. But 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 why we need to ask this in this scenario? We need not to ask this as in in our scenario. Yeah. Curtain lost or vision? Yeah, it, it is. Curtains are down. I, 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 I can say. So you need here. You need to ask just one simple question: Is there any problem with your vision? Because other symptoms are we are having different. We are asking about vision loss. We are not asking about the vision has become ended. We are asking any problem with your vision. So we need not to ask vision loss question. Okay. Yeah, so Murakus for Gox is that 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 curtains are down, that any sudden vision losses. Okay. Mm. Okay, but you are going to if you are in the emergency, you will going to admit. But here you are not in the emergency because we 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 put all the treatment together. But in this scenario, you are going to offer paracetamol, steroid, involve the senior, and in this scenario, you are going to send immediately. Home ophthalmologist targeted. It is not admission. Sorry, because it is GP. It is FY two in the no. It is in the rheumatology department. Yes, you are going to admit in the rheumatology department. You are going to admit the patient, offer analgesia, treatment this. But if still you are, you will not admit. Give the steroid and Right, analgesia involves the senior, and you will do these tests, uh, ESR and CRP kidney function test. You will be doing ureal electrolyte Dopplers. Doppler actually important is Doppler ultrasound. Okay, then confirmed on biopsy. You will do the confirmed. You will take that on biopsy, and this is who will do what you. And you will be not leave like uh, because I sometimes I'm making the note that sometimes we. Cannot arrange all the things. Sometimes it errors come because no leaflet. The patient is with you. Why you are giving the leaflet? No leaflet over here. No leaflet. Then this is these are the patient concerns. You need not to tell the, about that steroid. This is this is most of the time. This is the patient come with another scenario that is this scenario. And most of it, this is just to this is with a PMR scenario. Here you are admitting the patient. He will not be asking about because he, he that is an emergency. He's asked. He, Will I go blind? This kind of scenario, these will ask you the question. You just read this question like this. What are you going to do for me? You are talk. What you, how you are going to treat me? We are told. Doctor mentioned how it will be done. You will explain the biopsy. How the biopsy is done? You know that how it is done. A small piece of your like, uh, uh, artery is taken. How long this will take? To steroid, okay. Uh, this question is like: Are you going to put me on steroid? Yes, I'm. We are going to put you on steroid. How? How? What time? It one to two year. Because this is not the question. You cannot in this rheumatology scenario. You will not say by yourself. Patient you will ask. Then you will tell. Okay. When the doctors say they will admit, oh, I did not expect that. Okay. Then you need to counsel again. Patient say, I did not expect that. How you will counsel that? Okay, I can see, Mr. Matthew. Why, why you not want to get admitted? You say I have a lot of work to do at my home. Like I have my wife to be taken care of in the home. You will then you will be asking all that 
one window will be open. What window? Okay, let me explain it to you. If it is not treated, it is a treatable cost. However, if it's not treated on the time, it can be dangerous. You can lose your vision permanently. So that's why you need to get admitted. And regarding your other throat, like you, if you have somebody take home, we can we can offer you social services and I can talk to them. Okay. Always solve their problem as well. If the candidates say perform the test, which blood test, you know which blood test, ESR and ESR blood test and CRP, no other blood test. And that's all. These are the steroid side effects and all these questions are for you. This is for today's session. And today's session was really quite important because this is the area where uh, one scenario in your exam will come. In today's discussion, one scenario will come. Any question? Any question regarding to because we have today 